what is your understanding coming from the arts and the music background? What do we mean by this nature-based solution, Julia? This is about addressing some of the, um, the, the, the restoration of ecosystem that's both benefiting biodiversity and human well-being. And I feel like sometimes when we talk about nature-based solutions in a traditional context, there's been many examples globally where, where this has been mismanaged, which, it, which when it comes down to it, it's often um, sometimes as a result of that lack of community engagement. So for me, you know, as someone with a background in, in arts and community cultural development, I'm really passionate about the, the value of interdisciplinary research, citizen science and education around nature-based solutions so that there's this deep understanding um, of the community and of what the community needs. And I really strongly believe that nature-based solutions is very much about listening to the environment. But this idea of eco-acoustics, so using long duration recordings to map um, spatial and temporal studies in the environment and understand these changes over time. But as you say, you know, when we talk about a terrestrial environment, we're very familiar with the sound of birds and the sound of insects. If we talk about marine environments, we're very familiar with the sound of whales or dolphins, for example, mm. but fish and, and macroinvertebrates or aquatic plants, we're not as familiar with. So by using these devices, these underwater microphones called hydrophones, we're exposed to this different world of understanding these ecosystems. What are the elements you have considered? And you can give other examples where you have brought the environmental considerations into river restoration and the related ecosystem services. We started, uh, uh, we did some modeling also for the uh, minimum flow because we should know the velocity, we should know the discharge, we should know the depth of the water. Because these three things are very important for the fish to migrate for spawning. And we started working with the community. We counted the trees, we identified their species, and in somewhere we stopped the extraction of material from the riverbed. And then in somewhere uh, we asked the community to build uh, you know, spawning areas with the help of the uh, stones, with the help of the wood like trees, stem. So there we have seen that the fish, you know, star activity getting better because we were doing fish catching, monitoring, uh, we, we were doing fish monitoring throughout the stretch of the river. I yeah. guess, you know, when we're talking about the actual approach of doing it, when we take a, a long-term snapshot of that environment, so long duration recordings. And then when we're starting to implement these nature-based solutions, um, you know, continuing that recording process throughout the implementation of the project. And we have a whole range of uh, what we would call acoustic indices. So algorithms yeah. that can analyze and measure um, particular changes in those soundscapes over time or answering the ecological questions we want to ask. And we're able to use, you know, those computer generated algorithms to then understand mass amounts of data. How can we make our content and the materials more interesting for those nations? You see, the, the first thing, uh, dynamics of a country is very important, and the GDP. Because like yeah. in Africa, they, they are totally different. They're, I mean, rich countries, so they're doing very well. When you work in Iran or somewhere in Africa, like and work in Ethiopia, where the success is, uh, the first success starts whenever on ground, is the, uh, engaging the, uh, successfully engaging the community. And yeah. then the community, interaction with the regulators of the environment of any project and the policy departments or the strategic department, whatever you can say, at the provincial or at, the, at least the city level. And once the interaction is start, then the ownership comes of that day. Mm -hmm. Because I tell you that we are talking about nature-based solution and ecosystem. The ecosystem services mostly been owned at this time by the local community. I mean, they are living mm -hmm. there. We have learned that nexus approach is very important. We need to think about system beyond where we are working. We need to think of environment as a very important stakeholder while we are doing the development projects. So it's very clear 
that engineers need to learn more about the ecological environmental aspects and similarly a cross disciplinary approach is needed from the environment point of view environmental impact assessments are very important tools uh, they can help us move forward on many of these uh, uh, difficult areas and it's also highlighted today we need to carefully consider culture as well we can listen to the environment there are tools available as uh, dr lia barkley has uh, shown us and these tools are now very cheap these tools can be used with uh, large projects or with small projects sounding to your own backyard or sounding to a biosphere reserve or a river and the projects which have been done in a very innovative way like the example from engineer kamran yusuf for the uh, northern uh, iran clearly shows that there is a need for continuous monitoring and evaluation some of that is done of course if uh, there is improvement in the ecology with the uh, better fish for example then we have made a good success and uh, certainly he has shown us today there is success we also need to very carefully found uh, all those solutions which uh, are important for nature uh, should be native based solutions only when the community has given us the acceptance as well and the engagement with the community and understanding the community perspective is very very critical and continuous professional development of uh, engineers and environmental colleagues very important uh, sustainability insight is uh, one of the ways but we need to also bring these ideas into education for sustainable and the curricula related to that there is a lot of new leadership uh, in uh, citizen science in the local management of the biosphere reserves and uh, many of those examples to best practices are available uh, with uh, our japan funds and trust site which we will be putting links for you also very importantly how we bring all sectors into management of these environmental assets how do we link biosphere reserves how do we continue to learn about ecosystem services and in this very difficult era of covid and what may be uh, build back better maybe ecosystem services can be one way for engaging with those communities who are far away from the big cities from the capitals and they can play a very important role by looking after the environment by taking care of the ecosystem services to our landscape to our rivers but at the same time the economy can be revived in a greener in a better way and we continue to move towards better sustainability sustainability from the point of view of people from the point of view of environment and better economy and certainly it will help us deliver sustainable development goals which are important for the whole world and the time is running out for 2030 and hopefully these solutions and methods can come through also very importantly uh, my last message from today's uh, meeting is uh, as kamran and uh, lia has highlighted we must engage with the young people with the students we must bring their knowledge into Uh, how should we design our curricula how the knowledge products can be used by the different stakeholders and youth can help us move forward much faster and we do not repeat the mistakes of the past and this uh, can help us engage with the communities and local and indigenous knowledge can come through in the best possible ways